To get started on the job, the first thing that we want to do is make sure that our radiator is nice and cool to the touch. We didn't just come back from a nice road test and it's not hot. After that, go ahead and press this down, turn it counterclockwise to unlock it, and lift it up and away from your face. Give it a quick inspection, set it aside. Now that the radiator cap's off of there, let's make our way underneath the front of the vehicle. We're going to go ahead and remove this plastic shield. Looking at the plastic shield, you're going to find a whole bunch of plastic push clips. To remove these clips, all you have to do is use a trim tool or even just use some cutters and carefully grab onto the center without actually breaking the plastic and then just pull that down. Once it's unlocked, it should slide right out. There's going to be several that come along inside this area, and you're also going to notice that you have two inside of each of the wheel wells along this area, and then another one right here. Remove your shield. Now that we have that out of the way, we have a nice clear view of the bottom of the radiator. Over on the driver's side, you're going to find the petcock, which is considered the drain for the radiator. Now when I remove this, coolant's going to come out of it. I want to make sure I don't have anything underneath it that might get in the way and divert that coolant so it makes a mess. What we need to happen is this needs to be out of the way. We're going to try to divert this coolant directly into a receptacle so we can recycle it properly. Now with that said, you're going to try to find the mounting points for this wiring harness. There's one located right here. So I'm just going to use a pick. You can use a small screwdriver or whatever you might happen to have. Carefully get in between this area up along here and break it free. Once that's open, you can grab onto that wiring harness. We'll give it a little tug and just try to pull it aside so it's free and clear of this area. Now what you can see that I did here is I used a small piece of cardboard and I just essentially made a little funneling area to divert everything away from this area so it doesn't make a mess everywhere. Now we can go ahead and open this up, keeping in mind that coolant will come out of it. You need to have hand and eye protection at all times and a collection receptacle under this area. Let's go ahead and carefully grab onto this. We're going to turn it counterclockwise and we should start seeing some coolant come out. Now at this point, you can tell that I've drained out the majority of the coolant. It still has a little bit of a drip, but I'm not necessarily so worried about that. Let's just go ahead and close this off and we'll snug it up. Let's get our wiring resituated. Lock it in so it's secure. Now that that's drained, let's make our way up here. You're going to find your starter. And then just above the starter along the back side, you can see where the knock sensor is. There's wiring that leads to it, so of course we need to disconnect it. To disconnect it, there's a little tab where my index finger is. Go ahead and carefully pull down on that a little bit just to start pulling it apart. Every time you disconnect an electrical connector, take a peek. If you see any funny colors, it's corrosion and it would need to be dealt with. This one looks fine. Now looking at this from another angle, what I want you to pay attention to is the base of the knock sensor in comparison to where it connects onto the engine. Looking at it, you can see that there's still a lot of threads that are still exposed. So essentially, when we put in the new sensor, we only want to go approximately half to three quarters of the threads when we screw it in. With that said, let's use a 22 millimeter socket to start removing it. So I'm just gonna use my 22. I'll slide it right up onto this knock sensor. We'll put it right on. Turn this counterclockwise. Keep in mind there could still be fluid located behind it, so make sure you have a collection receptacle under it. There it is, friends. Okay, friends, now it's time to install our brand new knock sensor. Let's carefully put this up into position. We're going to start this in by hand so we're sure that we're not going to cross thread it into the engine. Okay, now I've got a few good threads in there. I'm going to go ahead and snug this up only approximately halfway to three quarters of the threads.
Okay, so right here I can feel it's starting to get a little bit more firm to be able to turn. I'm just going to give it a teeny bit more. I'll take a quick peek just to make sure that I went up as far as I need to be. From looking out front here, it looks perfect. Let's reconnect our wiring harness. Let's get this back in there. Listen for a click, give it a nice tug to make sure it's secure. Now let's go ahead and clean up our mess a little bit. Let's make our way back underneath the driver's side of the vehicle. We'll just make sure that the pet cock's closed and tight. Then we can start putting up our splash shield. For this, you want to make sure it goes up and over the ears that are underneath the bumper cover. After that, go ahead and put in all of your push clips. Okay, now it's time to fill our cooling system. Typically, it's a good idea to use some sort of a funnel if you don't have a specialty tool to be able to fill the cooling system. Now, when you fill this, you need to use the manufacturer specified fluid. You don't want to use green coolant. If you were to look at the overflow tank, you can see that it tells you to use a specific type, Dex Cool. It's kind of like a pink red. If you don't have access to that, you can also use a universal fluid. You just want to make sure that it's 50-50 mixed, so it's not complete concentrate. So all I'm going to do is just take some coolant. We'll pour it right in here. This is the universal coolant, so that's why it's this color. It's not green. It's actually yellow. We'll just go ahead and fill up the cooling system. Once it's full, we can go ahead and start it up and burp out any air in the system. Now the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and start up the vehicle. We're going to let it run for a while. What we need to happen is the cooling fans, they need to be able to turn on. Once those turn on, that's going to tell us that the thermostat's open and we should have some hot heat blowing out the vents. At that point, there shouldn't be any more air inside the system and we can go ahead and turn off the car and then of course we can remove the coolant funnel. Once you're sure it's full and there's no air in the system, let's go ahead and reinstall the radiator cap and make sure it's nice and tight. Once the radiator is full, let's make our way over to the coolant overflow. You want to pay attention to the side along here. Essentially, you want to make sure it's up to the full cold line. That's that bottom line right there. And definitely not too much higher than the full hot line. Just get it anywhere in between. Cap it off when you're done.